Hi there folks, this is very much a revisit of a video that I did three years ago. It was how to create a draft email in Outlook using Power Automate, which ultimately uses the Graph API. When I did it three years ago, there was an HTTP request action that was in preview and became deprecated, but it was replaced by several, maybe four different HTTP connectors. They are all standard connectors, so you can still create draft emails using a standard connector in Power Automate. And I guess where the exciting thing comes in now is because we have agents, you can involve a human in the loop. So potentially, rather than sending out emails from your agent, you can create a draft and then check the content of that email, personalize it before sending it. Now, if I jump across onto the official documentation, you can add attachments as you see, and you can also update the draft later, but equally you can just jump into your Outlook draft folder and update it manually. That's the whole aim. If you're interested in attachments, my blog post does cover that. But the thing I want to call out, permissions. This is going to run delegated as you. That's what the HTTP connector does. So it will use a permission that you already have to post a draft into your existing messages using this endpoint here, me messages. I'm going to build this from scratch so you don't need to worry. If you wanted to post on someone else's behalf, I very much believe that if you've got permissions to their mailbox and you're already creating messages on behalf of someone else, you can use the endpoint that I've highlighted and simply pass in the UPN, the user principal name for that user. The body, we have some samples down here, how to create a new message using JSON format. Again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this content and we're gonna use it as a template for creating a draft. And then just to make things a bit more interesting, later on in the video, what I think I'll do is I will create an Excel file that has a table of emails, a table of draft content, and then we'll loop through all of those individual rows and create drafts using a Power Automate flow. How does that sound? I'd love to hear it in the comments below if that's something that you could make use of. Anyway, I'm gonna copy that into my clipboard jump across onto my flow and it's a brand new flow and the first thing we're going to do is search for HTTP. So there are several send an HTTP request actions that we have now but the one that I want to go to is actually the Office 365 Outlook one. So if I click on that one there and the thing to point out is if I jump across onto about we can see the different endpoints it supports and the first segment is forward slash me or forward slash users which you saw in the documentation for create a message. And then the second segment, as we can see, is mail folders, events, calendars, probably the all important one for this demo, messages. So if I poke back across onto the documentation here, we can see we're trying to hit graph.microsoft.com forward slash v10, me as the first segment and messages as the second segment. If we were to be doing the individual users, then again, it's users as the first segment and messages as the second segment. So jumping back across onto that flow, if I go into parameters, because I'm using my Windows clipboard, if I do the Windows key plus V, I have the history of all the things that I've copied so far today, including that endpoint for the Graph API. And if I use post as a method, and if we look at the advanced parameters, I'm looking to find that body, which we've now added into our flow. So the body is expecting that lovely JSON payload. If I use my Windows V again, here we have that sample data that we captured from the Microsoft Learn materials. Now there are things in here that you might want to make dynamic. You've got the subject, you've got the content, and you've got the email address. But for the sake of this first stage of testing, if we save it and test it, let's make sure we can create a draft and then we'll try and make it dynamic and use an Excel file to create multiple drafts. Hi there folks, quick interruption. If you enjoy my content, please make sure that you like and subscribe. If you're interested in joining my community, check out the video description. Otherwise, I'll let you get back to the content. Cheers. So the flow is completed first time around. If I jump across into my emails, I can already see I have one in my drafts. And there we go, we have the draft email to Adele did you see the game last night? And they were awesome. Okay, draft complete. Let's fire up Excel. So using excel.new, that will create me a file in my OneDrive, 
we'll call this the draft emails table. And if I zoom in a little bit, is an email header, a subject header, and a body. And then with that, because we're doing a bit of testing, I might use Copilot just to create me some sample data. So create me five samples to include an email, a subject, and a body in table format regarding my local football team, Inverness Caledonian Thistle. And we'll see what happens here. Okay, that's not too bad. I'll copy what we've got here. We've not got sample email addresses, but we can work with that. So I now have some sample subjects, some sample bodies, and actually what I can do is I can put in my email address for all of these because it'd be quite good to fire these out as and when required. So I need this to be in table format. I can close down Copilot now. I can go into insert and table. And I'm also going to change the name of this table and call it my draft emails. And with that complete, if I jump back across onto my flow and go into edit, if I now add in an action to list the rows, from a table, so list rows present in a table, we can go and select our OneDrive. We can then again select OneDrive as our location. I can navigate to that draft emails table file that I've created. I can obviously then select the draft emails table. And then when it comes to my send an email action, where I currently have the subject, if I highlight that, go into my dynamic content and pick subject, We'll see it automatically pops that into a for each because it recognizes we're listing rows rather than a single row. It's a plural, there are multiple rows. We can now update the content here, again with dynamic content using the body. And then in terms of the email address, whilst they're all identical, I think you can appreciate that this is dynamic. The other thing I might change as well is I notice the importance is set to low. Let's set it to medium. So with that all in place, the theory now is, if I save and test this, I should get five draft emails all sent to me about my favourite football team, Inverness Caledonian Thistle. And that was not the outcome I was expecting. So it's failed, but the reason it's failed is because I was trying to be clever and set the default as medium for the priority. Medium doesn't seem to be a parameter, so let's just try med instead of medium and we'll send that again and see what happens. Okay, it's errored again, not what I was expecting. I can see that obviously Power Automate is trying to help me with some suggestions, but not really helping me with regarding that setting. I did jump across onto Copilot and ask what the options are for importance when drafting an email via graph, and you can see it says low, normal, and high, not med. I also had a quick look in the documentation and actually, there are examples here of normal, so that's my bad. If we jump back across into edit, I'll change this to normal. And if we test it now, run our flow, I'll close down Copilot again. We can see that the flow is completed as expected. And if I go into my emails, I now have all those additional drafts sitting there waiting to be sent. Of course, you can get a lot more creative. You can probably create some of this dynamic content either using Power Automate or from within Excel itself. I'm curious to learn in the comments below, would you look to use Create a Draft Email in your agents in Copilot Studio, for instance, like you can see on screen? Is that something you'd like to see in a future video? Let me know. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.